Actually, I don't see you on video. I assume you're seeing everything just fine. Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. That's all I really need. So. Um, okay. Um, so the idea is. Um, We let H be some upper Hesperger matrix. Um, so then we perform the QR factorization. Um, and we get, so we start with H and we apply n minus 1 given its rotations, row rotations, to obtain an upper triangular matrix R. Um, and this is going to be Q transpose, so H is equal to QR. Um, and then we take R and apply those same rotations on the right as column rotations in this order, and that gives us a new um, matrix H tilde. So if we put all this, uh, so, so this is Q right here. Um, so H tilde is R, but R is equal to all this. So we have G minus 1 transpose G2 transpose G1 H, G1, G2 up to G N minus 1. Um, but that's the same as Q transpose H Q. So that is a similarity transformation. So we are certain that H tilde has the same eigenvalues as H. So anytime you do this QR factorization to multiply the factors in reverse order, that is definitely going to be a similarity transformation. More than that, it is an orthogonal similarity transformation. It's always that have its form, Q transpose HQ, uh, where Q is an orthogonal matrix. Um, now, um, but an important point here is H tilde is also Hessenberg. And the way you can verify that or convince yourself of that is, um, if you keep in mind, you start with something Hessenberg, and we perform one row rotation to eliminate each subdiagonal entry, and then we got this upper triangular matrix. Now, what you're hoping is that when you take that upper triangular matrix and apply these column rotations to it, you'll get something as Hessenberg. It doesn't have additional non-zero entries. So let's go through a couple steps so you can convince yourself. Um, so, uh, the thing you mind is, each of these rotations, each GI, rotates either, either row or column, depending on which side it's applied on. So, rows or columns, I and I plus one. Those are the ones it affects. So, Let's take a look at um, a, a small upper triangular matrix. I'll just make it 4 by 4. So here we see where the non-zeros are. So now, I apply a given rotation on the right. So I'm rotating columns now. G1 affects columns 1 and 2 only. So columns 3 and 4 will stay the same, so I'll fill those in. So now what it's doing is, to get columns 1 and 2, it's taking a linear combination of the existing columns 1 and 2. So based on taking combinations of these columns, which entries could possibly be non-zero? Or the only ones that could possibly be non-zero? Um, the ones in row 1. Well... Yes, one and two, uh, because this entry could get rotated over to here. Oh. Yeah. So now we have two non-zero entries in uh, column one. All the other columns have the same non-zero structure as before. Now I apply a second.
second rotation, um, G2 is going to affect columns 2 and 3. So columns 1 and 4 will not change. So now I'm looking at these columns here. Which of those entries could possibly be non-zero? The same. You could have all three. Yeah, all three can be affected. Yeah, it's what's possible to make. Because uh, if, 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 if a column is... If both columns are zero in a certain spot, that's definitely going to stay zero. Anything else is fair game. So now uh, we have this, and if we apply one more column rotation, this entry down here, uh, that's still zero at this point, uh, will likely become non-zero, so we get upper Hessenberg form. So it's because of which columns are rotated, that's why um, we're guaranteed to keep this Hessenberg form from beginning to end. And that's, you're talking about doing QR and then RQ. Yes. Okay. So so if, you, if, if this cycle of QR, RQ starts with a Hessenberg matrix, it will always have a Hessenberg matrix. The intent is, by the continuous process, eventually even the subdiagonal entries will eventually become zero, leading to an upper triangular or at least quasi-upper triangular uh, form. OK. Um, <coughs> So now, if we, um, all right. So now let's take a look at a MATLAB-like algorithm for carrying all this out. algorithm for doing this. Okay, so we loop over each column, 1 up to n minus 1. Uh, we form a Gibbons rotation, so we need a cosine sine pair, so we can use the Gibbons function for that, like the one I posted on the side. And that's when you use the a diagonal entry of your Hessenberg matrix and a subdiagonal entry in the same column. Um, and uh, just to refresh your memory, um, if you apply this Gibbons function to two numbers A, B, your cosine is A is uh, A over R, S is equal to B over R, where R is the square root of a squared plus b squared, and takes the vector a, b, and multiplies on the left to get a vector where the, um, sorry, we're writing a little plotter here, where the uh, second entry is zero. Okay. Um, so that's just what an individual Gibbons rotation does. So what happens in this case, I'll go ahead and form a Gibbons rotation, C minus S, S, C. Um, and now we go ahead and carry out the QR factorization part. So I look at entries from J, only J and J plus 1, um, and only in those two rows, and I look at columns j to the n. So I'm only working, I'm only interested in these two entries to see how to do rotation, but it's going to affect the entire row, because I don't need the columns from 1 to j minus 1, because in these rows, those columns are already 0. Um, so I multiply these rows on the left. by or transpose of this given rotation. So, um, so this loop here does the h to 
is equal to QR part. Um, n minus 1 rotations, each one takes order n times, so order n squared work. Now, um, if I want not just the updated matrix H tilde, but I also want the um, similar, similarity transformation uh, Q that uh, pulls it off, I can go ahead and initially set that equal to identity. And then I repeat this process, except now it's column rotations. So I have to apply the column rotations um, and um, this is the portion of each column that can be affected. So I'm rotating columns J and J plus 1. But because H is a Hessenberg matrix, it's not, matrix is now the make triangular, and I'm going to make it Hessenberg again. I only need to do rows 1 to J plus 1. Everything below that is always going to be 0. So I multiply these columns on the right by the same Gibbons rotation. GJ. And then I do the same thing with Q because I want to accumulate the product of all of those um, give us rotations to see okay, what matrix actually did the uh, similarity transformation. So, in other words, this will give me the, the whole sure decomposition eventually. Okay, so that's it. That's the algorithm um, that. Uh, does um, H equal to QR and then H tilde is equal to RQ is carried out in this part and it actually computes not just H tilde but also Q. So, so really after I do all this I should say like H tilde equals um, well, I guess I completely say I can say H tilde equals H um, and then do all that. Okay. All right, um, so now we know how to make each iteration faster. And um, so what we'll start with next time is how we get a general uh, matrix A to a Hessenberg form in the first place. So we'll pick up with that on Wednesday.